Diet Squad, welcome back to another reaction to The Mandalorian Chapter 20. I am Element. Yes, and I am co-wielder of the Darksaber currently. My name is Darth Chaco, and together we are the, the Dyad, Dyad in the, in the force? force. How did this get here? How are we yeah, going to sometimes. decide who rules Mandalore? I will just just co-run it. You take six months, I'll take six months. <laughs> Okay. I don't think okay. that, I don't I don't think that works legally. I will make it legal. We are joined today by fellow lore master and Star Wars biologist Sawyerism. How are you doing, Sawyer? Doing pretty good. Thanks. We're also joined by law Lord Vader himself, lawyer, ma <laughs> law master, <laughs> Star Wars lawyer. What's up, Chris? Not much. I, I wouldn't go so far as say law master. I don't think anyone's a law master because. It's, it changes all the time. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Ever flowing <laughs> is the nature of the force. Mm, always in motion. Yeah, I mean, that also tracks with what uh, Yoda said to, to Ezra, right? To learn the law is a lifelong struggle. <laughs> mm, yes, yes, indeed. As always, timestamps are in the description if you want to go straight to the reaction. Guys, how are you feeling about this week's episode? What do you think is going to happen? Paz Vizsla is going to be a hater. Of course. <laughs> Paz Vizsla was born sipping on Haterade. I don't know. I haven't given much thought to the Mando Bogotan situation because of the everything we got in addition last week. So I've been thinking a lot. It's me. I've been thinking a lot about the cloning stuff and the biology stuff. And so I hope we get a little more information there because it didn't dawn on me until literally like three hours ago that that directly ties to, I don't know what. I, I was trying to convince my mom and my dad that Kane was, was she was just totally like drinking the New Republic Kool-Aid and that's why she did what she did to Pershing. And then three hours ago, I was like, wait a second, that is totally not what happened. So I've been thinking through that and I uh, really hope we don't, I hope we don't do the Bad Batch thing where we don't bring that up ever again for the rest of the season and we get more of that <laughs> tonight. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it is a lot to process, especially for those people who think that, you know, the New Republic was was good as it, as it started. Still a lot of flaws and kinks in the machine. Uh, I'm going to reach here. We're going to see Sabine. Uh, I think it's time to see Sabine. The dark saber has has been gone from her hands long enough, and I think someone needs to teach uh, Din. And I think Bo at first is not, is going to be hesitant to, and she might call Sabine in for a favor. I just think yeah. so. I mean, Filoni Filoni co wrote the, the episode. <laughs> I I think I'm uh, on the boat, hoping that that flashback scene we have in the Jedi Temple is them getting the dark saber from the jedi temple like the armor is like regaling that tale and hoping it's not another order 66 scene like i'd love to see who rescues grogu but at the same episode. time oh well unless I mean, it's quinlan voss i don't want it it, it hasn't, hasn't <laughs> been confirmed but uh but you know it's it's been uh, carl weathers said that this episode you know was was the other writer on it and he said this episode was called um what was it the, the foundling the, the foundling the foundling yeah um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm actually hoping that we'll get some parallels between um, between Din's growing up and uh, and Grogu's growing up, mm. because I, I feel like this is kind of the, the family that Grogu was was robbed of that. Uh, well, that Din was robbed of is he lost his family and he's giving that to Grogu right now. Um, I definitely do think we'll get the uh, Order 66 flashback. Um, I'm hit or miss on Sabine, but I, I'm definitely calling that we are going to see the beginnings of the struggle of now having Bo-Katan as part of the Children of the Watch, because I feel like there's going to be some discontent there. You know, like you mentioned Paz Vizsla, he is really proud of his house. And so I think he's going to like want to like lord that over. Um, I, I think, you know, as Pep said uh, previously, maybe the armor has a dark secret that the bo is going to unearth. I think there's a lot of really cool things we can get into. Y'all excited? I'm I think we ready. Should, I think we should get into it right now. All right, I'll stop talking. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is heavier truth. than I thought. bo like a lawyer, is walking in technicalities. And she, she, <laughs> sees, she sees recruits. She sees potential union there, but I don't think she wants to walk the way. No, I wouldn't. No. Helmets get stuck. I fully anticipate her to want to almost 
usurp the uh, the armorer to have a new crew to fight for Mandalore crew of believers. I think that's what she's been missing this whole time. You never thought I'd see a beachhead full of Mandalo Mandalorians. Them shooting out over the ocean just reminds me of Krillin doing command mail waves down the ocean <laughs> to prepare for the androids. What are they aiming at? I don't understand firing without aiming at stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully they are aiming at something. What are those spears made out of? Because I thought Beskar spears were a no-no. Um, not Beskar? Or not pure Beskar. Hmm. Yeah, there is the Beskar, Beskar alloy that the lower houses used. Hmm. <laughs> Slurp it up. We've seen those before, haven't we? That reminded me of Pirates of the Caribbean. Next challenger. <laughs> oh. Oh. I gotta fight that baby. <laughs> There's gonna be resentment if he uses the force. Uh, are you sure this is a good idea? If he is ever to rise from foundling to apprentice, he must learn. He is too small. <laughs> I am bored. Proceed. He is too small. What weapon? Let the challenge decide. Darts. Bring the training darts. <laughs> darts. Training darts. Why doesn't he wear a helmet? He is too young to speak the creed, and so too young to wear a helmet. Interesting. And he's too young to fight. Fight. You just got here. One does not speak unless one knows. Is that not the creed? Well, I know. Perhaps this lesson is for you then. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Fighters, arm yourselves. Just yeet it over to yourself, Grogu. Is this the first time we've seen, like, a Mandalorian um, training match in, like, a show? My dad was the same. Um, there was a... <laughs> oh, well, oh. Like a ceremonial training match? You take it yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm having flashbacks to KOTOR 2 right now. <laughs> Stop the darts with the force, Grogu. Squeeze your fist to launch the dart. That's against the rules. You'll be fine. Is it? Mm-hmm. That's why he asked which weapon. Didn't been training That's a fifty-year-old man. Let him live his life. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets pegged. <laughs> Look at him. Krogu, I've seen what you can do. It's okay. Show them. Show them. The first Mandalorian Jedi, or the second. Here he goes. Ready. Begin. Begin. Hey, at a boy. At a boy, Grogu. Oh, say the name. What the? Tame it, tame it, Grogu. No blasters will kill the child. Follow it to its lair. Be careful that Aegon doesn't get you from above. I've seen mm -hmm. it happen. Too soon. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> it always gets away. Oh, the book of hands got... like, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Think smarter, not harder. All right. I mean, listen, if Grogu is the centerpiece of this, I'm feeling real confident about Sabine. Mandalorian lore. I love it. Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. These are no higher than the peaks of Kairamorit. I used to climb them in basic training. Oof. Side of the foothills, 
scale the rest of the way on foot. I'll join you. It's like shooting the mop rats. Join the street talk training team to accompany you. I will pack extended lariats for your launchers. We must avoid explosives and blasters for the safety of the foundling. Bro, I got little legs. It's <laughs> <laughs> the sand. <laughs> This I love it reminds me of uh, Darth Bane walking and Xana trying to keep up. <laughs> New weaknesses. Is he gonna get a little armor? Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> oh. Kelleran? Kelleran Beck. Oh, I love it. That's so cool. We give well, our boy Ahmed Best uh, some, some love. Yeah. Show him. Get the young to Kellerin. Go. Oh gosh, he looks so much younger. Oh man. <laughs> Grogu's like, man, I was a baby back then. <laughs> Everything's good. <gonna> <gasps> Oh, let's yes. go! Uh, I mean, like, I'm so happy they get it. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, oh, oh, give him something to do. <laughs> okay. Sounds like tomorrow Morrison. Come on, man. <laughs> Please hand oh him off God. to Quinlan. <laughs> Please hand him off to Quinlan. Let's make this a joint Get effort. Him, <laughs> oh. oh, no. Oh, my God, he looks so small. <laughs> Oh man, this is crazy. Ooh. Hey, oh. pause the center. <gasps> nice. That looks familiar. Every time I see that, I'm like, oh, High Republic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna meet up with some friends of mine. Oh my on. God. Some friends of his? Are we gonna get Quilla? Are we gonna get a are we gonna get a boy? Oh, oh, oh. Nubian! Oh. Ah. Okay, Amadalins. I thought that if if Kira Knightley takes him, I will. Right okay. <laughs> Is that Fox? I hope not. I like he's like, all right. Well, I'm going. <laughs> Man, this is such a crazy, like, perspective of Order 66. I feel like I didn't want to see another Order 66 scene because they've all been the same up until this point. Well, that's what I love about it. Every single time it, it, they show it. Damn! Next time. <laughs> Who are you, Terrence Howard? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know I said if I wasn't Quinlan Boss, I didn't want it, but... That's a good alternative. Being Ahmed best again. Oh, he already looks like Tar Vizsla. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long till we get the trope of like someone fires a shot and he falls back? And then goes, huh. <laughs> it's, it's gonna have to be Moff Gideon mm, whenever yeah. he catches up with them. Paz is like, I don't take orders from you. If, you uh, <laughs> if your ancestor did, we wouldn't be in this situation. No, if uh, uh, Pre Vizsla listened to Bo, they wouldn't be in this situation. Maul wouldn't have taken over Mandalore. You right, you right. We'll go in stealthily. The guy's got a big ass gun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fact that they're totally following her lead and trusting her is a testament to the fact that the watch has been removed from what Death Watch was. Hmm. 
Because if pre were still around, this would not happen. You don't. When you get your food, you go off to find a place where you can take off your helmet. Oh, that wasn't a joke. You are the leader of the war party. You have the honor of staying by the fire. This is the way. Okay, Baz. I see through your lies. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a scene at the end of the season where all the Mandalorians take off their their helmets, and like they all look super. And it's weird. all Tamora That's Morrison. <laughs> no, it's all the original Boba Fett, where he just looks like a he looks like an accountant. <laughs> it will kill the foundling if attacked. It has happened before when it has taken others. <sighs> right back to basic training on Kritamora. <laughs> it can't be easy climbing with those helmets. No, you literally like the people in there literally can't see up <laughs> right now. <laughs> I understand that struggle. No, I'm I'm just laughing because I'm looking here and especially seeing how they're dressed and stuff. I was like, okay, I see two titans, <laughs> mostly war, mo mostly hunters, <laughs> and a warlock. <laughs> So we found the heavy in the Battlefront 2 party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the guy with sweet business? Yep, my favorite <laughs> class. LBRB, boys. LBRB. Who is who did that? Commander Thorin? It's Thorin, whose last stand in Season 6 of Clone Wars was just a uh, heavy cannon just mowing people down. He's my son. My son. Oh, oh, another Vizsla. It's a trap. Dude, you're going to go into a bramble patch with all of that gear? Oh, babies. Damn. Oh, oh you don't mess with mama. Mm, this is mama. a bad time. Mm. Bro, that must have been terrifying. <laughs> oh, crap. Well... So that went differently than expected. <laughs> uh, they always, he always gets away. They're gonna run out of fuel again. Take my hand. Lost her pauldron. Um, is she gonna be a mud horn too? No. <laughs> Dang. She crazy. All right, she uses strand. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you stand both hands to clear skin. I never worried. Oh, shit. That's only a Plaridon. <laughs> <laughs> well, those babies are screwed. I'm okay, Dad. Uh, no, those babies are food. Jesus. This is the way. Corpses. Well, until they start feeding on each other, then one of them might live. I like them dead and deep fried. Y'all ever heard of Popeyes? <laughs> <laughs> it never gets Ant old. Anti armorer. This is the way. And we have brought you three more foundlings in need of care and training. Is that so? What? <laughs> They're going to ride those now. They're going to ride them. They should name that species Basilisk. <laughs> I can replace what's missing, but not with its modern refinements. Mudhorn. Mythosaur? Mythosaur. Would it be acceptable to wear one pauldron from the Night Owl and another with the Mythosaur? Hmm. Is this going to become Bo Katan's theme? Because I love it. Is this Bo-Katan's theme? Oh, uh, I guess we'll have to see in the credits. But I like it, like you said. This is the way. I don't think she believes her. Nope. She's like, yeah, bless your heart. 
Oh, that was but, it. But that's also kind of like me saying, hey, man, I <laughs> I saw a Velociraptor. <laughs> no, I oh really saw it. A giant Grogu <laughs> concept art. Jeez. I wanted more, dang it. <laughs> me too. Me too. What are you talking about? That was a filler episode. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Listen, we got this is the Mandalorian. We've got a whole episode full of Mandalorians, full of Mandalorian lore. <laughs> More like Phil DeLorean. Am I <laughs> am I right? Am I right? I'm gonna All slice right. you. That was I. Th I thought that was a great episode. I, I might at some point stop with the Quinlan watch, and I'm gonna start the Sabine watch because I know she's coming. I, I I gotta say though, I mean, uh, I believe um, Chris, you were at Ce Celebration twenty. 18 or 19 the one in chicago right no i was at 2017 okay okay i i was almost breath of tears watching the replay i wasn't there but um because that's when they brought ahmed best on the stage and we mm. actually got to see the fan appreciation and like you can see he was about to cry too um and it made me so happy to see love for him in the fandom because of what he's been through and you know he's been part of star wars for a while now he, he had a, a show i don't know if it's still going on on youtube kids to see jedi master kellerin beck in here i was everything you know <laughs> it was so good it's honestly uh, nothing something that i didn't see coming you know it's, especially considering uh it's the actors behind the prosthetics or the cgi characters when they are brought into star wars they're you know background characters you know they get their little like three seconds on the camera when they turn and like face the camera but they don't really get anything of consequence in terms of the plot of an episode or a movie but they this change there and for someone like Ahmed Best I, I couldn't be happier for him. I mean it was really cool to see him. I feel like when they announced that they were gonna do the like YouTube show it, it didn't like yes it, it's it's nice that they're honoring him now and bringing him including him more into Star Wars but this was like different because it's like how canon is this cute little YouTube kid show? No now Keller and Best is a can or Beck is a canon you know what I mean like that was really yeah. cool and unexpected I don't think any of us could have predicted that and no. not, not in a million years mm -hmm. but, but you're absolutely right like it's it's one thing to have like a like a mention or to be in some type of you know lore magazine or in a visual dictionary it's another thing to be on the prime time on the show saving the main character dual wielding and handling clones like his no at his business <laughs> like on the uh upper parts of the lapels on his inner robes had gold uh insignias on them that's more uh reminiscent reminiscent to me of the high republic because mm -hmm. most of the prequel i don't think any prequel jedi that we saw outside of temple guards had any kind of gold on the the robes and you know the temple guard robes were separate in general so do you think that was a, that that was a choice by ahmed best do you think like he came and said do you want to oh, yeah. do you want to be like in, in this order 66 scenes like yeah can i like wear high republic stuff <laughs> he's the only one in the temple during the during the prequels who's just like trying to keep the the dream alive <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine being a, a youngling or even a padawan in the jedi temple and during the that the time of the prequels and like going to um look at all the holocrons and seeing all of these jedi like what, why we get stuck with these colors like, what, what, what happened man like, <laughs> <laughs> we need like opal Rancisus, yoda yaddle and plo Koon talking about like y'all remember when we used to have gold robes man what happened to that <laughs> too much swag it was um <laughs> <laughs> stand out we did sorry i'm still i'm still on this the, the keller and Beck kick because mm -hmm. it because now that it's happened it makes so much freaking sense on the youtube shorts is teaching children uh would be the one saving children like yeah, that was and I'm, I'm, I'm mad at myself for not, not thinking about that but more than that um we we got we got a lot of stuff from from bo katan and she is right now actually getting the respect and deference that she's always wanted like she's always had to fight to show people uh how you know she can lead but as a leader of that hunting party she, she received all, all the respect she repeated this is the way i'm curious if you if y'all are thinking that 
she might honestly be considering joining or is she considering usurping or where do you think she's at i i think yeah last week we were all kind of like okay she knows i mean her home just got destroyed things are not good she needs protection right now it's in her best interest to play along and a lot of people were speculating that she's like infiltrating or whatever like she's gonna try to tear it apart from the inside whatever i think that Bo-Katan's entire journey from the start of when we met her in the Clone Wars has been trying to find her place. Neutral sister who didn't want any part of the old ways and then joining terrorists and realizing that that was not the way to go and that, you know like she and then trying to reclaim Mandalore but not having all the like this whole time Bo-Katan's story has always been like what is the way you know I know I'm Mandalorian what is the way so I think I don't know to me it seemed like she's like the wheels are turning I don't think she I think this was especially especially when Paz Vizla thanked her but also was like you're the hunt you're the leader of the party you get the fire like I think she's going, oh, okay, maybe, maybe the way is not to be divided anymore because that's why this failed so many times. So I don't think she's like gung-ho, yes, I'm going to stick with the watch. But I do think she is adjusting her opinion a little bit. I'm on the, I'm on a similar page here. Um, seeing the mythosaur down there sort of sparked this kind of lost spirituality that sh- that Bo-Katan had and I think that's that's part partly why she was just so um, curious and told the armor about this because I think I think um, this episode showed her especially with Paz as Sawyer said showed her the value of what the watch could be but I think she is still kind of um hesitant about putting all of her chips in one basket she might be trying to find some affirmation to what she saw fought, re- rekindle that spirituality i don't think she's she's 100 percent all in but she's definitely seeing the value uh so about uh bogatan i don't think like you know i, I was agreeing with, with a lot what sawyer said uh so i won't repeat her um just you know bogatan being open post seeing the mythosaur and trying to find okay what is what is the way to best unite all mandalorians is it the watch is it uh satine's way is it's definitely not the watches the death watch's way um but how can we bring all our people back together without fighting um and i think she's looking for avenues to do that and i think the reason why she told the armorer is I could be wrong, but because we don't know anybody's age, but I feel like the armor is one of the only few Mandalorians that was around during the time of that Mandalore pre-Empire. So there may be that level of uh, not camaraderie, but just in shared history um, that she may is like, yeah, no, I saw a mythosaur. Sure you did, honey. No, I saw a mythosaur. You don't get it. <laughs> um and so uh, I think that'll be an interesting dynamic to see play out. Yeah, the armor is old enough to remember the folk tales, but young enough to have never seen one herself. No, I'm staying on the Quinlan Voss watch still, but I'm adding <laughs> Sabine to that list. Quinlan Voss for, for the path, Sabine for training Din. I'm down with that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is this is a reach. This is a reach. But given timing give me cow castus <laughs> give me it's live so much action reach anymore cow castus give me next episode um or maybe two episodes down the line where we're getting the game soon came on a hand is is the character you know what i mean so like when he says we're gonna meet some friends give me the mantis crew well at that point the mantis crew isn't the mantis crew that's true yeah, Cal- Cal- but that's only five years, and he did change through a lot of hands. So he could have went from Quinlan to another Jedi to the Mantis crew to over oh, the years. Absolutely, over the years. Uh, I'm just uh, you know for especially on our reaction to the trailer, we were really, or at least I was really feeling like what he was alluding to was using some of like these ancient Zeppo things and stuff to facilitate um, mm. the path where he's like you know, we'll go a place where they can't follow, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's 
to save people. So I want to see them start setting up the path at that point in time. And then like it's an it's a ongoing struggling movement. Well, when the quote happened in the story trailer, they showed a, a High Republic temple. It looked a lot like Mon Chi. You know, I don't want to start reaching again. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. At this point, he there is no Cal Kestis for him to meet up with. He is currently going, he's currently escaping on his own, the, the ship that he was on. Um, so he's not he's not in a position to save anyone else, you know. He, he's kind of like in an escape pod. But I, I do think that man, I I like to retain the 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 notion that Quinlan Voss is the one that started the path. And I feel like I feel like the friends that he's gonna meet up with, especially since it's a Nubian ship, they're going to Tatooine. And and Quinlan Voss is like back in that on that that cantina that he was at when you spotted him in the phantom menace he's just that's <laughs> he's where still he, there. he yeah when he when he comes back from uh boss pity he goes back there sometimes to just sit down i, I do wonder though you know how in, in in legends he went from boss pity to kashyyyk if they're gonna bring that back in because i don't know do we know where luminara was before she got captured i mean she got straight up killed in legends but uh yeah she got put on ice <laughs> yeah so but then like but then like we spent two and a half years speculating on grogu's rescuer and never once said kellerin back <laughs> so okay. it could be someone entirely different Is Kellerin back around like i feel like it yeah. wasn't until 2021 that he showed up watch there be <laughs> one like youtuber or tiktoker that said kellerin back like two years ago and they're gonna like like share their old video and they're like vindication <laughs> i'm still on that sabine watch too man she's she makes sense uh it makes sense that she would make her her live action debut on the mandalorian i feel like she'll, if she's gonna show up she, i feel like she's gonna show up in the finale though ahsoka's like, showing up at some in. point so they're gonna show up together or you know the armor takes off the helmet and it's sabine and we're all like what Nah, <laughs> you crazy. They're gonna show up together, and then Elia Kane's gonna be like, um, "That was just an alias. My name is Karen Farrow." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Correction, and and I, I apologize. Sorry, I can't remember what year you said. You are right. So Keller and Beck became a thing in 2020, um, and I was mistaking the other character, who's his cousin also played by Ahmed Bess. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ahmed Beck. <laughs> okay. Honest mistake with those kind of, you know, interchangeables there. <laughs> yeah, he got to be an extra in the prequels as himself. I haven't really been speculating on any real Star Wars shows besides like right before I watched them. So I'm, I'm going to keep that going. We've been reaching a lot and been failing. <laughs> <laughs> i love speculating because i'm someone that uh when i get proven wrong i say oh that's awesome <laughs> and roll with it you know mm -hmm. uh so yeah i i love speculating quinlan voss and being proven wrong by a better alternative which was keller and beck and so mm -hmm. um i'm just gonna keep it as broad as ever you know sabine sabine's gonna show up until she shows up <laughs> i don't care which episode it is but she's showing up um, agreed I still say she was casted way earlier than a lot of people. I think that was because she was going to show up in a previous show. Ahsoka shows up Mandalorian, gets Ahsoka show. Sabine shows up in Mandalorian. Are we going to get a Sabine show? Are we going to get an Ezra show? Oh, oh wait, I do. I do have a speculation. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, a ship is going to arrive at the Mandalorian covert and then Ahsoka is going to walk off and Sabine's going to walk off and then there's going to be uh, a man in like a, a darker uh, uh, army outfit and he's going to come down he's going to have blue skin and red eyes a goatee and an eye patch he's going to be like Din Djarin I'm here to talk to you about the Chiss Ascendancy <laughs> and then cut to black <laughs> it was an idea <laughs> <laughs> so are any uh, speculations? Or reaches. You know what? The first time I was ever on a podcast, it was it was Brandon's RAP High Ground, and it was for predictions for Mando. I had never been asked before what my predictions were, and I was not prepared because I was not a lore master. You introduced me as such, but I, I don't call myself that anymore. I'm constantly learning things. Lore <laughs> masters but, keep learning. Masters of lore have learned. I, I see. 
Um, I prefer lore enthusiast, but anyway. Um, <laughs> you, and, um, you and Bucky both. I, uh, I don't, I didn't know enough then to speculate, and now I do know enough to speculate, and every time I'm wrong. So I'm like Chris, I just go with the flow. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. I guess me and Chaco just love being wrong. <laughs> to me that's the point of being a lore master you know as pep puts it it's like being a quartermaster um you know where you are responsible for the quarters like the lore master being responsible for learning maintaining bringing in sharing lore third amendment chaco no quartering yeah i guess that'll do it for this reaction to mandalorian chapter 20 the foundling I want to thank uh, Sawyerism and Star Wars Lawyer for joining us today. Um, Star Wars Lawyer or Chris, do you have anything to plug, say, perhaps in the next two weeks? I don't know what's going on in the next two weeks. I don't, I don't know. Is there is there something called Star Wars Celebration going on? There like, is something called Star oh, Wars man. Celebration. Uh, yeah. I, Who are you I, going I might... as? Are you going as uh, as like just some regular resistance trooper or I don't I don't really know who you're going as uh right now we have uh empire strikes back lando best in lando and empire strikes back vader um anything else that might come might be a surprise <laughs> <laughs> awesome and uh do you uh where, where can people find you in your content uh you can find me uh, at star wars lawyer on tiktok twitch youtube instagram and twitter and also my podcast, Too Black, Too Nerdy, wherever you listen to podcasts. And now the videos are being uploaded to YouTube as well. Right on. And Sawyerism. If you call, you can call me Sawyer, but as long as you acknowledge that there's not a you in my actual name. That's how you are in my happens, contacts. I'm just kidding. What? Oh my God. <laughs> it happens to me every single day. I'm like, there's no you in my name. It's just weird to put a you in Sawyer. Uh, I know. Anyway, I'm not going to celebration. I'm so mad because I really wanted... Like, I didn't want to go, and I did want to, I really want to go, but I just I couldn't make it work, and uh, I'm going to be very sad. I do have something to unplug, because I'm hosting a trivia tournament, and you hey. still have, like, 10 days to uh, apply, because I'm doing it differently than everybody else. You have to prove your worth before you can really compete. So, uh, find me on my socials. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you find me, my link tree, top of the link tree, qualifier quiz for the tournament. Pep took it, but he dropped out. Thank you, though. <laughs> for, for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> for good reason, yes. Um, well, thank you, guys. <laughs> I've had 53 people take it, so it's going to be... It's going to be difficult. But thank you guys so much for joining us for this uh, reaction. Uh, and for those of you who are missing Star Wars Celebration London, stay tuned because there's something might be called a Dyad Con coming next year. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no celebration next year. And we still got a party with uh, amazing creators. So we'll, we'll be we'll be figuring something out. Yep. Um, also the, stay tuned because there's going to be some giveaways on this channel but uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that this Saturday absolutely uh, if you guys enjoyed this reaction please leave a like and subscribe and follow our guests uh, the, their links will be in the description below but um, subscribe and share this video with all of your friends but that's the end on to the next one for light and for life we are all the republic and god bless Kelleran Beck May the force be with you. This is the way. <laughs>